Are you trying to get pregnant and wondering what can you do to improve egg quality? Well, in this video, we're going to go through the exact step-by-step -step process you need to take to improve egg quality naturally. Stick with me to the end because I'm going to give you the one thing you absolutely must do to get results and how long you need to do it for. Welcome back to Fertility Mom Ladies. We're going to straight into what you can do to help improve egg quality. And I want you to get a calculator or your phone ready so that we can do some cool stuff together in this video so that you walk away with a plan for you. First, let's go over really quickly what egg quality is because there's been a lot of scientific breakthroughs in this area over the past many years. And I'm just gonna do a quick explanation of it for you now, but if you want more in-depth detail with me, then register for my free class below down in the description box or in the first pinned comment. As we know, egg quality does diminish with age, so we need to be intentional about the process for improving egg quality as soon as we reach about the age of 40. I have had many patients who have had babies well into their mid and late 40s when we're doing the right things for their bodies. An important thing to understand is that we used to think that aging was an irreversible process, especially for egg cells, but we've recently discovered in the past many years that that's not exactly true. One of the most specifically important parts of your egg cell is something called mitochondria. Mitochondria are found in every cell inside your body and they are what we call the powerhouse of the cell. They create the energy that your cells need to carry out their important jobs. So every time you breathe, blink, beat your heart or anything, your mitochondria are the ones responsible for creating the energy to allow the cells to do that. Your mitochondria inside your egg cells not creating enough energy can be one of the main reasons we're not able to get pregnant or stay pregnant, especially if we are in our 40s or if we have other health issues that can diminish egg quality even before age 40. A normal part of the aging process is that we lose a lot of our mitochondria and their capacity to create energy. So between the ages of 20 and 40, we lose 50% of our mitochondria. And between the ages of 40 and 70, we lose another 50%. This is a huge cornerstone of the aging process that we used to believe was not something we could change. We used to think we lose the mitochondria, it's just part of aging, there's nothing we can do about it. But we have recently found that we can not only increase the number and quality of the mitochondria, we can increase their energy making capacity. This means we're actually able to increase the amount of mitochondria inside your egg cells so that you can get pregnant and stay pregnant. Something called a mitochondrial transfer has confirmed for us the importance of mitochondria inside the egg cells and how important they are to pregnancy outcomes. Mitochondrial transfers, when you take the genetic material and nucleus of one woman's egg and you replace her mitochondria, with the mitochondria from the egg of another woman. This has been shown to improve pregnancy outcomes. This procedure is not widely available, and in a lot of countries, it's not even available at all because of the ethical questions of technically having three different genetic parents. But the important thing about these studies that are being done is that it shows us when we're talking egg quality, we are talking about mitochondria. And this important detail really tells us what we need to focus on. When we're trying to improve your egg quality, we're trying to improve your overall health and your overall mitochondrial quality inside not just your egg cells, but in all of your cells. Because we cannot spot treat egg quality, we cannot spot treat just the mitochondria inside your eggs. We need to make sure we're taking a step-by-step -step process for your body to improve your mitochondria so we can improve your pregnancy outcome. So get your phone, get your calculator, we're gonna do some cool stuff. And remember, at the end, I'm gonna give you the one thing you absolutely must be sure you're doing so that all of these things we're about to talk about make the biggest difference. One of the things that your egg quality is most sensitive to are the nutrients in your body. So one of the first things we have to do is increase the amount of nutrients dramatically, both your macronutrients and your micronutrients. Something I find that most women are really low in is their protein intake on a daily basis. So get out your calculators. We're going to do some fertility math together. You want to be sure you're having a minimum of 1.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. So if you know what your weight in kilograms is, you'll multiply that by 1.2 and that's your minimum goal. If you know your weight in pounds, you're going to take your weight in pounds, divide it by 2.2 and then multiply it by 1.2 and that will give you your minimum protein target in grams per day. But we don't stop there, that's just your minimum. And you might find that it's kind of ridiculously high compared to what you're eating already, but we keep going. Your optimal amount of protein that you wanna have per day is anywhere between 1.5 grams per kilogram and 2.2 grams per kilogram per day. Once you've calculated your number, hit me down in the comment box below. Let me know what is your minimum, what is your optimal, and how many grams of protein do you think you're actually having per day so that we can kind of see how much more we need to go. 
Protein is one of the building blocks of every cell in your body, and it's necessary for DNA repair and cellular repair as well, which is hugely important when we're talking about eggs. So make sure you've calculated both your minimum and your optimal amount of protein. If you're not anywhere near your minimum, you're gonna to wanna to start bringing yourself up to hit that minimum level first, and then work on getting yourself into that optimum level of protein. You wanna focus on getting your protein from whole food sources, but you can rely on protein powders here and there if you need to. I recommend you go with an animal-based protein powder or a plant-based protein powder, but stay away from whey-based protein powders, specifically because for many women that can cause inflammation, and some hormonal disruption, and that's not what we want when we're trying to improve egg quality. Another really important part about increasing the nutrients in your diet is going to be making sure you're having enough fat. Fat is a fertility superfood, and there are studies that show that women who have low fat intake and low cholesterol intake have lower ovarian hormone production. Fat is also found in a very large amount inside your egg cells themselves, which goes to show how important fat really is to the health of the overall egg. You want to focus on getting good sources of fat in. So you're gonna to wanna to eliminate vegetable oils and any kind of seed oils and focus on olive oil, avocado oil, coconut oil, butter, ghee, tallow, like beef tallow and things like that. Some really great food sources of fats are going to be things that come along with your proteins as well. Things like grass-fed beef, pasture-raised chickens, and eggs, which are a really great source of protein, fat, and other micronutrients. And you'll also want to get wild-caught fatty fish like salmon. Really great plant sources of fat are going to be things like avocados, nuts, seeds, and olives. Those are going to be the fats that are going to help nourish your body and nourish your egg cells the best. Everyone's perfect fertility diet is gonna end up looking a little bit different because everyone's body is different. But you wanna make sure that the majority of the food that you're eating is from whole and unprocessed food sources. This helps to eliminate a lot of inflammatory factors that can come into us through our food, but it also helps us to increase that nutrient density in the body, which is crucial for improving egg quality. We also do need to figure out what are your personal food intolerances because those will cause inflammation in you, but maybe not in others. I find that most people do end up having a couple of things here and there inside their diets now, that when we remove, not only do they feel better, but they start to see positive changes in their bodies, like their cycle's a little bit more regular, or maybe their period was lightening before and now it's starting to get a little heavier, or the clots are disappearing. Little signs like this will tell us, yeah, we're on the right track with our dietary change. Main takeaway here, ladies, is that we need to drastically increase the amount of nutrients that are coming into your body so that we can improve your egg cells and specifically help those mitochondria make more energy. The second step in making sure that we're doing everything we can to improve your egg quality naturally is to make sure that we're eliminating toxins. This is going to start with eliminating toxins that are coming into your body through your food and other places. The way you wanna think about this is that we want to eliminate toxins that are going in your body first, then on your body, and then things that are around you in your immediate environment. Now your body is very resilient and really smart, so we don't have to be completely crazy on this. You're not gonna be able to control everything that you're surrounded with or exposed to when you go outside, but we can control the things that are in your immediate environment at home, and that's where we're going to focus most of our efforts. So the first thing is to make sure we take care of everything that's going in first. So we're gonna get rid of the ultra-processed foods and all of those refined products that have a lot of chemicals and toxins in them. Then we wanna make sure we're looking at the things that we put on our body. So the products that we use on a daily basis, our lotions, our makeups, our creams, and things like that. And then you want to look around your house. What are the things that we're using on a daily basis that have fragrances or scents or chemicals or toxins in them? One of the first places you're really going to go is your kitchen. We want to make sure we're getting rid of all of the plastic. We're replacing it with glass. No plastic utensils, nothing that can melt into a pan, no nonstick. We got to go with cast iron, stainless steel, and silicone products in the kitchen. This is going to help dramatically reduce a lot of the things that are coming in because one of the best ways to detoxify your body of all of these things is avoidance to begin with. Another thing that's very important when we're trying to improve egg quality is making sure that we're managing your sleep and your stress. I have a lot of videos here on the channel about sleep and stress, so you definitely want to check those things out, but this is about managing the stress in your body and everyone is a little bit different, so we kind of have to find the things that are jiving for you, whether that be meditation, yoga, working out, walking, journaling, praying, whatever it is for you or whatever ends up being the best way of managing stress for you, that's what we want to end up doing. Exercise is an excellent way to manage stress, so we definitely need to put in some sort of exercise routine in here, but nothing that's too strenuous. Walking, Pilates, yoga, these are the types of things that you want to engage in to make sure we're having some activity and getting that blood moving and we're also decreasing inflammation as we do it, but we're not overly straining the body and causing more stress by increasing cortisol. Sleep is also something that we need to pay a lot of attention to. As we start to get into our 40s, we are going to notice that our hormones are shifting, our sleep is getting to be a little bit more difficult. 
Maybe we're not able to fall asleep or maybe we're not able to stay asleep for the full run of the night. We're getting up a few times here and there to pee or we just wake up for whatever reason. This isn't something we should just put a band-aid on. A lot of women will just start taking melatonin. While melatonin can be helpful for some women, it's not something that I run to immediately. We need to start resetting your circadian rhythm. We need to start using some tools to help you fall asleep easily and then stay asleep a good seven to nine hours. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you're getting enough light in the morning, but we're decreasing the light input at night as the sun is going down. You also wanna make sure that we're using blue light glasses, white noise machines at night, and other tools as well. The ultimate goal here is that you are sleeping most nights between seven and nine hours. Another really important step in improving egg quality is going to be a personalized supplement protocol that is designed for you. You want to make sure you're taking the right form, the right dose, that you're taking things the right way so that you're absorbing them. And you also want to make sure you're taking high quality third party tested supplements. That way you can make sure there's no contamination and the dose that it says on the bottle is the dose that is actually in the capsule. Your supplements are aimed at not only increasing nutrient density to help with mitochondria, but also to aim at giving mitochondria specifically what they need as well. So with these supplements, we're looking at things like CoQ10, PQQ, NAC, nicotinamide riboside, inositol for many of you, sometimes DHEA, there's a lot of controversy about that one, alpha lipoic acid, and many, many others. I have a lot of supplement videos on my channel, so make sure you check those out. And now we're coming to the most important part about improving egg quality. In order for you to successfully improve egg quality, we need to have three things. You need to have the right plan for your body. We need to be consistent with that plan over the right amount of time. If you have the right plan, but we're not too consistent and we don't do it for long enough, you are not going to get results. On the other hand, if you're consistent with the wrong plan for the right amount of time, you're still not going to get results. The thing that makes it the most successful is consistency over the right amount of time. So let's talk about what does the right amount of time look like for you. Well, the egg development cycle is about eight months long. That means the egg you just ovulated was a reflection of your entire body's health over the last eight months, which means if you start doing everything right today, an egg eight months down the line will have had its full egg development cycle bathed in all of these great changes that you're making. But I usually say give yourself between three and eight months of making the right changes to actually see a good significant change in your egg quality. That means if you're working on your egg quality in preparation for an IVF cycle, don't start making changes two weeks before another IVF cycle and expect magical changes. Give your body enough time so that we can see the good changes happening. So remember, when you're on a quest to improve your egg quality, we need to make sure you have the right plan, you're consistent with that plan, and you're consistent with it for long enough. When you go into your improving egg quality journey with the mindset that you're not just doing it for two weeks, we can let go of the idea that you need to be perfect all the time for a really long time. We need to aim for being about 80% on target for a very long period of time. So that means 80% of your meals, 80% of your sleep, 80% of your stress management, and all of these tips and tricks and techniques that you're going to put in place to help improve your egg quality. We do not have to be perfect by any means to get results, but we do have to do the right things for your body most of the time. Going into this with the mindset that I don't have to be perfect, I just need to make the right changes for my body and just stick with them like they are a lifestyle change, not just a one-time diet that we're gonna do for two weeks. When we enter it with that mindset, it helps a lot with consistency and it can help keep you a little bit less stressed and pressured throughout. I hope that video was helpful for you ladies. Make sure you check out the other videos on my channel. I have a lot more supplement videos coming out specifically for you on how you can improve your egg quality with supplements. So subscribe and make sure you hit the bell so you know when I upload that new content for you every single week. I'll see you on the next one. Bye ladies.